Hello, this is News Now, reaching you live from Ibrand TV News Studios in Lagos. Coming up, gunmen kill three farmers in Basa local government area of Plateau State. Unknown gunmen abduct the father of Chairman Ubuya local government area of Biosa State. President Muhammad Buhari approves setting up of integrated farm estates in all the senatorial districts across the country. The U.S. economy adds fewer jobs than expected in August as employment rises by 235,000. Hello again and thanks very much for joining us on News Now. Here are top stories making headlines. Michael Nath. We begin with the latest development in Plateau State where unknown gunmen killed three farmers on their way to the farm. The incident it was guarded occurred at the Rewenku a community in the Miango district of the council area where gunmen had killed someone five days ago after they attacked uh, some farmers in the locality. Others had escaped the attack. Spokesman for the Miango Youth Development Association, Nuhu Beatrice, confirmed the latest attack on the farmers. The president of the community, Friday Bulus, who lamented the killings, gave the names of the victims as Friday Yakubu, 39, Sunday Na, 45, and Musa Evi, who he said was 57 years old. Bulu said that the three corpses had been evacuated from the bush to the community for burial. We'll bring you more details of this very story in our subsequent bulletins. Meantime, in Bayelsa State, unknown gunmen have attacked or abducted the father of the chairman of Ubia local government area. Uh, Ba Lipre uh, Turner uh, was kidnapped at his residence at Samfino Street, Bansia in Yenegua, the state capital, and whisked away to an unknown destination. The incident occurred around 10 p.m. on Sunday. His whereabouts remained unknown at the time of filing this report. Now, President Muhammadu Buhari administration has approved the setting up of integrated farm estates in all the senatorial districts across the country. Executive Secretary of the National Agricultural Land Development Authority, Prince Paul Ikune, announced this Saturday weekend after a meeting with President Muhammad Buhari, the presidential villa in Abuja. The Nalda boss said the land provided for the project would enable the youth to leave the unemployment market and help the country to achieve food security within a short time. He said the Kogi state government had donated 700 hectares of land to Nalda for the integrated land estate, while the 100 hectares of land donated by the Ogun state government had been cleared. Ikone said the president was committed and, uh, to working towards ensuring that the country achieved food security. To make this plan a success, Ikone, however, urged state governments to make arable lands available for the project. Now, the seven chief just, uh, judges summoned last month by the Chief Justice of Nigeria, Justice Brahim Muhammad, for allegedly issuing conflicting court orders are to appear before him today in Abuja. Although today's summons were earlier directed at the CJs of uh, Rivers, Kebi, Cross River, Anambra, Jigawa and Imo states, it was learned that the invitation was later extended to that of Delta State over a purported order against the leadership of the All Progressives Congress, APC. The affected judges are to first meet with the CJN in preparation for the eventual appearance before the National Judicial Council. It was learned that the CJN plans to meet with the leadership of the Nigerian Bar Association during the week. The federal government has vowed to recover millions of naira wrongly paid to 588 medical doctors across the country. Minister of Labor and Employment, Senator Chris Ngige, said this when he fielded questions from State House correspondents in Abuja. He explained that affected doctors wrongly benefited from medical residency training fund meant for a particular category of doctors. He said the names of the doctors were uncovered after a thorough scrutinization of the 8,000 names submitted by chief medical directors of federal government health institutions for the training program.
The minister, however, revealed that a substantial amount of the money had been refunded by some of the affected doctors, while efforts had been intensified to recover the remaining balance. Kaduna State Government uh, Governor Nasiru El Rufai says his government is committed to organizing free, fair, and credible elections across the state. Speaking at the uh, on Guan Saki Ward under Kaduna North Local Government Area of the state during the local government poll, the governor advocated electronic voting as a measure to curb election fraud. The voters' machine we've been using now in the newly technology, I think it's good, but preferably there is no privacy. You have to allow the electorate to choose whatever party he likes, with not knowing from the, the other person. That is the presiding of the polling units. When you operate the machine, you display the, all the party logo, allow the electorate to cast his own vote, go back to one side, Make a private, uh, let the uh, electorate choose what he supposed to choose and leave him to do whatever he likes. So, but this now, what I've seen now, is this a, it's a new te technology. We like it, but there is no privacy. I think uh, there is a significant improvement over 2018 local government elections. Uh, the improved voting machine we now have makes it nearly impossible to do multiple voting, which happened a lot in 2018. The whole process takes less than 15 seconds. So it's very quick, very efficient. It will allow the people of Kaduna State to elect who they want. We do not have to win everywhere. We know that we have worked for the people of Kaduna State. We know that they can see the footprint of the government and local government everywhere, the APC government, and we are confident. Now, the People's Democratic Party PDP in Kaduna State has described the 19 local government elections as a shame and unacceptable by the party. The PDP claimed the electronic voting machine was programmed to rake other parties out of, out of the election by scoring votes for the APC at the commencement of the verification of the result sheets prior to the voting proper. It's wrong. I mean, it's different from what we saw today in most of the polling units because the first printout as we got from different polling units uh, it seems as if the machines have been tempered with with results allotted to the APC giving them bigger numbers I mean huge figures uh, different from other political parties if you see we have some of the results here the result sheets from some pulling units. With such figures being allocated to APC, it is as good as to say that the results and the outcome of the election have already been determined by CATSICOM officials working in tandem with APC to rig the election to ensure that the votes of the people do not count. So this is not acceptable to the party, totally unacceptable to the party, totally unacceptable to the people of Kaduna State. The president of the Christian Association of Nigeria, Dr. Samson Ayokunde, has advised Nigerians to embrace love and unity. Ayokunde, at the inauguration of Love of Christ Generation Church, Lagos, on Sunday, said the country would move forward if the people were united. Similarly, the general overseer of the redeemed Christian Church of God, Pastor Enoch Adejare, in his sermon, noted that God was capable of answering all those that call upon him. The founder of the church, Reverend Mother Esther Ajayi, said she listened to God's voice by coming to Nigeria to build the branch of her church. Now, the federal government has also been advised to make move towards making public offices less attractive in Nigeria. This was made known by Rotarian Ibrahim Adebisi, the new president, Rotary Club of Mende, in midtown Ikeja, Lagos. Speaking with pressmen during his official investiture held in Lagos, Rotary Adebisi said it is imperative for anyone who wants to assume leadership role to do so with the intention to render service rather than focusing on personal gains. He has a wonderful leadership uh, style, which if 
every government could adopt it, it would be very, very wonderful. And, you know, it will not be an attractive government kind of. In Rotary, we are serving, we are actually eager to serve as a leader because, not because we want to end something, but because we want to serve selflessly. If uh, the government can actually adopt such system where they make public offices less attractive, it actually helps us to identify those who truly want to serve the community, not because of their personal gains. So that's my advice, but I, 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 wouldn't, I wouldn't think it's possible. But if they could adopt that system, like in Rotary now, the next three years, we have those who are going to serve in the club, leading and actually identifying projects where they are needed for people to actually benefit more. So for government, for governance, we would advise that they adopt the style of Rotary in terms of leadership and style, and that will help a lot of people to have more impact and government will be more responsible for the citizens. Some members of the organization, however, spoke on their expectations from the new president. We support our president in achieving all his objectives. Inside there, you have uh, people that we have selected across the globe as the awardees, those that have supported uh, Rotary Club Mende in achieving his objectives of giving back to the society. It's, it's a great opportunity, especially um, for some of us that are Rotarians, to contribute to humanity, to um, help solve problems within our community in our own little way. And um, that's why everyone, everyone around the world, especially Rotarians, are always happy when it's a new Rotary year and a new president is being inducted. Yeah, well, it's been very, very challenging. I, 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 won't, uh, I won't lie here. But at the same time, it's been very impactful. Uh, my new president should be focused, should be strong and uh, be calm. A former member of the House of Representatives, Honorable Joseph Akinlaja, has described the rising cases of kidnapping in schools in the northern part of Nigeria as a bad omen for well, the education system most... in the country. Akinlaja spoke in Akuriat, the inauguration of uh, the Ondo State Chapter of the Youth Assembly of Nigeria and Peace Corps. People can no more stay in school. States are withdrawing their, their citizens from universities other than their own. We're going to Jaws and bring people from University of Jaws. People are bringing people from universities. Where will they study? So Boko Haram, Western education is becoming a, a, a taboo. The essence of government is to secure the lives of citizens and the properties of citizens. So that is the starting point. Uh, unfortunately, government is, has more or less ab uh, abdicated that responsibility and the citizens are being told to go and secure themselves. But going forward, I think government should have everything. About the issue of uh, the government of the day, it's not about the issue of party, PDP or APC. It's not about issue of pointing fingers on this person is right or this person is wrong. Where have we gotten it wrong and how can we address the issues headlong is what should be the topic of the day. And I can boldly tell you today that not only the establishment, the Ministry of Education, Science and Technology has granted us approval and they have sent a circular to all principals in those state to establish the peace club in, in the state. Sequel to the just concluded All Progressives Congress, local government Congress uh, had uh, held across the country. The Oyo State Chairman of the Congress Committee, Hilary Amudu, has applauded the peaceful coexistence among gladiators within the party. Amudu gave this admonition and his address at a stakeholders meeting of the party, held the party's new state secretary in Ibado. And I have gone around. Ibado. We went to some few places and a lot of other members have gone outside to Oyo, to Isegi and others. And what I saw was a good turnout, a peaceful congress, the, the, the delegates were also there to, uh, to, do, to exercise their franchise. And I was impressed. Well, I think uh, for the first time, I must commend uh, the, the party, APC, and its members for a job well done. But what even amazed me about anywhere you go, you see rejoicing. You look at the times has changed. People are ready to take 
what belongs to them. So by coming as chairman of this uh, local government congress, I'm sure he has, has, has sent the uh, light also to the party, especially in your state. And by his grace, we'll see the end of it. You're watching news here from the iBrand TV studios in Lagos. Coming up next is business news. Hello, welcome. This is Business News. I am Frank Omalape. And now the Federal Inland Revenue Service may lose over 2.4 trillion in revenue to the 36 state government in 2022 if it loses its appeal against the Federal High Court verdict which barred it from collecting the value added tax and personal income tax. A 2.4 trillion era is what the Federal Inland Revenue Service project to collect from the VAT if it retains the authority to collect consumption based tax. Uh, a document has shown the FEC sitting in Port Harcourt, the River State Capital had on August 10 ruled that stating not the Federal Inland Revenue Service have the legal right to collect VAT and income tax. The Federal Inland Revenue Service has appealed the judgment on why the government of Lagos and River State have expressed the readiness to begin the collection of value-added tax in accordance with the judgment. And away from there now, the National Bureau of Statistics says Nigeria's total trade rose 23.28% higher in the second quarter of 2021 compared to the first quarter, an 88.71% higher than the value recorded in second quarter of 2020. This was contained in a document released by the Bureau at the weekend. The NBS also noted that the value of imported manufactured goods decreased by 5.1%. In second quarter against the value recorded in fourth quarter, but increased 54.3% compared to second quarter of 2020. However, the value of raw material imports, it said, increased by 25.6% in the second quarter of 2021 compared to first quarter and 47.3% compared to second quarter of 2020, while imported agricultural products were 3.5% more in second quarter of 2021 than in first quarter and 56.9% more compared to second quarter of 2020. And away from there now, the Central Bank of Nigeria says cutting down on foreign goods, aggressive investment in agriculture, and complete diversification will revamp the nation's economy. Director of Corporate Communications Department, CPN, Osita Wanisobi, stated this at the weekend at a one-day interactive session with the organized labor and civil society on the five-year policy thrust of CPN in Enugu. Wanisobi said it was for the reason the APS Bank introduced about 37 intervention programs, especially for agriculture, to boost the economy, reduce inflation, and create more jobs for the youth. And now, the president of the Dangote Group, Aliko Dangote, has disclosed that the African Continental Free Trade Area will offer his conglomerate a business opportunity that is estimated to be worth 12 billion US dollars per annum. Dangote made his disclosure during a high level roundtable discussion on industrialization in Africa, which was organized by the Manufacturers Association of Nigeria, MAN, as part of the activities to mark his 50th anniversary celebration. He said, and quote, we are building a 650,000 barrels per day petrol refinery. All these are not for the Nigerian market alone, but for sub-Saharan Africa, because all the sub-Saharan African countries are importing the petroleum products, end quote. And in the meantime, the Securities and Exchange Commission has unveiled plans to reduce its operating cost in order to boost profitability within the next two years after the outcome of the Senate probe of the capital market regulators' finances last week. SEC has said it was projecting a fiscal deficit of 5.17 billion um, naira for the year 2021 with staff cost gobbling up most of its revenue. The Commission, in a statement on Sunday, said the Director General, Mr. Lamido Yuguda, noted that the Commission was taking steps towards reversing its current fiscal circumstances which he said resulted from COVID-19 in these difficult times faced by capital market players. And on the African scene now, local motor uh, vehicle dealers are bracing for shortages as inadequate supply of semiconductors used in electronic devices 
uh, slow production of global automakers. Toyota, uh, Volkswagen, and General Motors are among the automakers that are cutting their production amid a shortage of semiconductors that are key in the manufacture uh, of modern cars. According to some of the franchisees, the supply disruption is expected to continue until April 2022, with a major improvement likely to be felt in the second half of the year. Semiconductors are used to control electric currents, making them essential in battery management and in car entertainment, among other systems. They're found in devices such as sensors and microcomputers. And now, Zimbabwe has licensed 57 foreign and local entities to grow medicinal cannabis in the southern African nation, a country's investment and development agency said in a statement Sunday. The agency said production has begun at some of the licensed farms which have spread across the country, and the Ministry of Lands is working with the agency as well as the Medicines Control Authority of Zimbabwe to ensure that the quality of the seeds imported meet regulatory requirements. According to the Treasury, sales of cannabis are forecast to reach $1.25 billion in 2021. Zimbabwe legalized medical, uh, medicinal cannabis production in 2018, but it hasn't begun any export. And on the foreign scene now, most Asian stocks rose Monday amid uh, an ongoing rally in Japan, sparked by the planned exit of the Prime Minister and our traders mode slow slower U.S. hiring that may delay a reduction in Federal Reserve stimulus. Japan was up more than 1% to a 31-year high on hopes of better pandemic management and more spending by Prime Minister Yoshihide Suga's successor. U.S. markets are closed Monday for the Labor Day holiday. There is no treacherous cash trading. Meanwhile, Armenian extended its surge on political unrest in Guinea with fuel concerns over supply of the raw material needed to make the metal. And in the oil market now, oil prices extended losses on Monday, falling more than 1% after the world's top exporter, Saudi Arabia, slashed crude prices for Asia over the weekend, signaling demand concerns and those global markets are well supplied. Rent crude futures for November fell 90 cents or about 1.2% to $71.71 71 a barrel in early trade, while U.S. Wex Texas Intermediate crude for October was at $68.45 a barrel, down 84 cents or about 1.2%. State oil giant Saudi Aramco notified customers in statement on Sunday that it will cut October official selling prices for all crude grades sold to Asia, its biggest buying region, by at least $1 a barrel. And now the U.S. economy added few jobs than expected in August as employment rose by 235,000. The figure was well down uh, on the 1.05 billion jobs created in July, adding to fears that the recovery from the pandemic may be running out of steam. Despite the disappointing hiring levels, the unemployment rate fell to 5.2% in August from 5.4% in July. Economists say rising in infections caused by the Delta variant have hit spending on travel, tourism, and hospitality. They also noted that the Labor Department's data was collected in the second week of August, so does not reflect the impact of Hurricane Zeta and Henry in the second half of the month. President Joe Biden said he was disappointed but defended his record on the economy, saying it was growing consistently. And Sima Gado, principal global investor, called the figures a major miss that screamed Delta disruption. Well, and that's much we can take on business news at this hour. Many thanks for watching. I am Franco Malapa. He's back to you now. Thanks, Frank. Up next is Sport Business. Cristiano Ronaldo's new number 77 shirts at Manchester United has smashed records for the most sales within the first 24 hours after its release. Ronaldo will help make the seven famous during his first stint at the club, 
was handed his old number after its previous owner, Edinson Cavani, agreed to swap to the vacant 21 shirt at the same number he wears on the international stage with Uruguay. United's club store was inundated with fans trying to buy Ronaldo's seven jerseys. And it got to a point that uh, Fnatics, the company who made the online store, confirmed via the Mod Mirror that they had seen a record number of sales over the first 24 hours of the first shirt being confirmed. Ronaldo's move to United generated more shirt sales than Lionel Messi's switch to Paris Saint-Germain and also bested another previous record holder, NFL star Tom Brady, and his 2020 move to the Tampa Bay uh, Buccaneers. ITV have confirmed they have reached a deal to broadcast all the England women's tournament qualifiers and friendlies over the next four years. Already the home of the men's team, ITV will continue to show Gareth Southgate's sites World Cup, European Championship and friendly games, home and away until 2022. Across ITV, ITV4 and the ITV Hub, fans will be able to catch any and every England tournament qualifier and friendly over the next four years, including Friday's World Cup qualifying match against North Macedonia at St. Mary's Stadium. Coming up next, entertainment business. Marvel's Shang-Chi -Chi and the legend of the Ten Rings garnered an estimated $71.4 million at the domestic box office this weekend. This is the second highest opening for any film released during the pandemic and the highest of any film released over Labor Day weekend. Internationally, Shang-Chi -Chi tallied another $56.2 million in ticket sales, bringing its estimated global total for Friday, Saturday and Sunday to $127.6 $127.6 million. Disney and Marvel Studios' Shang-Chi and their Legend of the Ten Rings garnered an estimated $71.4 million, uh, million dollars at the domestic box office this weekend. It was the second highest opening for any film released during the pandemic and the highest of any film released over Labor Day weekend. Now, box office analysts uh, foresaw a sol solid start to the film's theatrical run as it had the second highest advanced ticket sales of any 2021 release just behind Black Widow, according to data from Fandago. Uh, Afro eccentric singer Mr. Easy has joined others to invest uh, in a, a $9 million seed fund to boot power pay operations across Africa. The singer's Zagatat Capital was listed among companies that partook in the seed fund secured by Poor Power Pay. Uh, confirming the development in a statement, Mr. Ease, uh, who is also an entrepreneur, said the kicker for us was that we believe in the clear mission, vision and strategy and we are confident that the Power Pay team is the best team to achieve it. Mr. Izzy is widely renowned for his investment in African talents with his empower management that is responsible for the success of rising music star Joe Boy. And with that entertainment story, we end the news here on Iron TV Lagos. Thanks very much for watching. I'm Michael Nath.